Hey guys, Justin here, and welcome to the third example video following our course on differential equations. Today's video is going to be on first order separable differential equations, so let's go ahead and get into our definitions for the video. Now for today's video we only have one definition, and that's just the definition of separability which we're going to use for all of these problems. So we will say that a first order differential equation is separable if it can be written in the form h of y times y prime is equal to g of x. So yes, the definition is just like it sounds. If you can separate the variables, the equation is separable. So with that defined, let's go ahead and get to our first example. So for our first problem, we're going to want to solve the differential equation x times cosine of x dx plus one minus six y to the fifth power dy is equal to zero. Now right away, it's pretty easy to tell that these two that this equation is separable. As we can see on the left-hand side here, we have our x terms, and on the right-hand side here, we have our y terms. And because we already have our dx and our dy split up, we can integrate each of these, the first one with respect to x and the second one with respect to y. So for the first one, we'll have the integral of x cosine x, and then we'll have plus the integral of one minus six y to the fifth power dy. And I forgot my dx over here. So we'll be doing this first integral using integration by parts. And we'll do that using the black pen, red pen uh, integration by parts table. So on the left side, we'll have derivatives. And on the right side, we'll have integrals. And so here we have our function x. And here we have cosine x. So taking derivatives down this side, we'll have 1 and 0. And integrating this side, we will have sine of x and we'll have negative cosine x. So matching on the diagonal, we will have, remembering we have alternating signs, we'll have plus minus plus here. So we'll have plus x sine of x, and these two negatives will cancel out, which will give us a plus cosine x, plus a constant c for this first integral. And the second integral will contribute a plus y minus y to the sixth, and that is equal to zero. Now, as this is impossible to solve for y, we will have to give an implicit solution. So our implicit general solution for this differential equation will be x sine of x plus cosine of x plus c is equal to y to the sixth plus y. So let's go ahead and move on to our next problem. All right, for problem number two, we have that y prime is equal to x squared plus y squared over x times y. So we're going to begin by making the following substitution. We will have that y is equal to v times x. But that means that y prime is going to be equal to v plus v prime times x by the product rule. And this is because v is a function of x. So that means we can substitute this into our original equation. So we'll have v plus v prime times x is equal to, well, let's see, uh, we'll have x squared plus vx quantity squared over x times x times vx. And we can factor an x squared out of the uh, numerator to get the following. We'll have v plus v prime x is equal to 1 plus v squared over v. And we can subtract a v over. So we'll minus v minus v. And we'll get x times dv over dx equals 1 over v. And now we have an equation that is, in fact, separable. So we will separate that like this. We will have dx over x is equal to v dv. And we'll take the antiderivative of both of those. And so the left-hand side will give us just the natural log of x plus c. And the right-hand side will give us 1 half v squared. And we can absorb that half into our constant here. And we'll get 2 times the natural log of x plus c equals v squared. But using logarithm rules, that'll mean that v squared is equal to the natural log of x squared plus c. Then we can take the square root and we'll get that v is equal to the square root of the natural log of x squared plus c. 
then we can have to do our substitution, which was that y is equal to v times x. And we'll get our final general solution for y. We'll get that y is equal to x times the square root of the natural log of x squared plus c. And that finishes this problem off. Alrighty, so for number four, we are going to make a similar substitution to the one we did before. But this time we're going to let x equal u times y, which of course means that dx over dy is going to equal u prime y plus u. So we're going to make that substitution here. Now we can see that in order to get dx over dy, we will need to flip both of these two fractions. So let's go ahead and do that and make our substitution here. So we will have that u prime y plus u is equal to, well, let's see, we'll have y squared plus y squared e to the u squared plus two times u squared y squared e to the u squared all over two times, let's see, x is y times u, so we'll have y squared u e to the u squared. Now we can see that we can cancel out this y squared by factoring out a y squared in the numerator. And so let's go ahead and rewrite that to see what that gives us. We'll have one plus e to the u squared plus two u squared e to the u squared all over two u e to the u squared. That's of course equal to u prime y plus u. Now we're going to split up this fraction so that we will have one plus e to the u squared over two u e to the u squared. And this right hand side of the fraction is going to cancel to be just a u, but we can see that we can cancel this u with the u over here. So that will give us that this whole thing is equal to u prime y. But now we have a separable differential equation. So we're going to split up this u prime into du over dy and split up our variables. So we will have two u e to the u squared over one plus e to the u squared du. That's going to be equal to Let's see, one over y dy. So we're gonna take the antiderivative of both sides there. This one's obviously just going to be the natural log of y plus c. And this other one here on the left looks like it's going to be challenging, but it's in fact not. We're gonna make a simple u substitution, or in this case, a v substitution. We're going to let v equal, well, let's see, we'll have e to the u squared. And that means that dv is going to be equal to 2u e to the u squared du. And we can see that that is in fact exactly the same thing as our numerator here. So we will rewrite our integral as the integral of dv over one plus v. And that of course is going to contribute a natural log of the absolute value of one plus, let's go ahead and undo our substitution, one plus e to the u squared. And that is equal to the natural log of y plus c. Now we're going to exponentiate both sides. The exponentiation is going to undo this natural log and it will raise this whole thing to the power of e. But in the first term's case here, the natural log and the e will cancel. So we'll just be left with a y and we can write e to the power of c as a new constant. So figuring that all out, we will get one plus e to the u squared is equal to c times y. Now we can go ahead and solve for y here to get our final general solution. We will have that y is equal to some constant c times one plus e to the x over y squared. So let's go ahead and move on to our fifth and final example. So number five is y prime is equal to e to the y minus x times the secant of y times one plus x squared. So let's go ahead and separate our variables here. We can write this y prime as dy dx, and that's going to be equal to e to the y over e to the x times the secant of y times one plus x squared. So let's go ahead and move our y's over and our dx to the other side. So we'll have 
e to the minus y times well, one over secant, but that's just cosine, cosine of y dy on this side. And that's going to be equal to, we'll have e to the negative x times one plus x squared dx on this side. And we'll take the antiderivative of both sides there. Now we're gonna do the right side of this. Uh, we're gonna do the integral on the right side first. So let me go ahead and draw an arrow for that. So we're gonna do this by integration by parts and we're gonna use the table that I talked about earlier. So on the left-hand side, we will have our derivatives and on the right-hand side, we will have our integral. So our function we're differentiating is one plus x squared and we are going to be integrating e to the minus x. So taking derivatives on the left, we'll have two x, two and zero. And integrating the right-hand side will give us negative e to the negative x, e to the negative x, and negative e to the negative x. Keeping in mind that we have an alternating sign here, we're going to go ahead and multiply on the diagonal and then add or subtract as necessary our terms. So this integral here is going to give us minus one minus x squared times e to the minus x minus two x e to the minus x and minus two e to the minus x. And we can factor out a minus e to the minus x and that will give us x squared plus two x plus three and then we'll add our constant c there at the end. So that's what we'll get for that right hand side. And for the left hand side, we're going to actually do something a bit tricky. So if you recall, our integral is of the e to the minus y cosine y dy. And that is in fact equal to the real part of the integral of e to the minus y times e i y dy. And we can rewrite that in the following way. We'll have the real part of the integral of e to the minus one plus i times y dy. But taking the antiderivative of that is just going to give us the real part of one over negative one plus i times e to the minus one plus i times y. And then we can multiply by the conjugate and split up that e term to get the real part of one plus i over negative two times e to the minus y times e to the i y, but that's just equal to negative one half e to the minus y times the real part of one plus i times cosine y plus i sine y. But the real part of that is just cosine y minus sine y. So our final evaluation for our left integral is going to be negative one half e to the minus y times cosine y minus sine y. And that is equal to negative e to the negative x times x squared plus two x plus three. And then we'll add our constant c here at the end. And we will leave that as an implicit solution. And that's a good place to stop.